Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. It's my day off work today, so put the sky here behind me. Overcast conditions, guys. 75 ish right now, maybe 80. Kind of humid, it's raining on and off. But uh, we're gonna try to get out here and catch us a few fish early this morning. It's a little bit after after nine, maybe like 10, 10 30 or so. But never too late to get out and try to catch some fish. So, guys, stay tuned. Um, Stay locked, guys. Hopefully, we can get on a couple fish this morning. Hopefully, no dinks. My recent experience in this location is a bunch of dinks, but I'm determined to catch a solid fish. So, stay tuned, guys. Let's go get them. Coming here to this little pocket. First thing that I notice is that there is some current or some wind pushing back into this pocket here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Wind blowing back into this little pocket. So my first thing, honestly, my first thing was should have been is a moving bait. For instance, the jacket. But we're gonna go with the pop Z since we got some some flooded grass lines and stuff right right up on the shore. We're gonna target that. That's first things first. We'll see what happens that way. It's popping around the outside edge of these grass lines, which in reality you sh they should. Be some quality fish hanging around, or if any. But if not, then we'll just go with a moving bait right after. And then we're gonna follow with a weightless Senko presentation since that's been something I've been trying to work on as of lately, and I've been actually doing pretty well in my opinion there we go whenever I'm using a top water bait such as a popper pop Z or the or a spook goodness gracious there's shad in here oh my god that shad just came out of the water like 10 freaking feet why does why am I not getting bit right now Oh my goodness. I didn't know they had a shad in here. That shad came flying out the water. You guys see that? Why am I not getting bit on this? <sighs> Jeez, that was a straight. Oh my goodness. He came out the water like a sort of rocket. Why am I getting bit right now? All right, got on the War Eagle spent a bit half ounce here, guys. Seeing that and Chad jump up. I heard it was Shad here. I have never seen him, but now I know. Seeing that Shad jump up like that just kind of further lets me know that I need to be using something that's got a little bit of flash to it. Doesn't bring any lipless cranks, any chatterbaits, I mean, any uh, Bill Lewis's, which I'd rather be using right now, but this is going to happen too. This might be. As you can see straight ahead right here wind blowing into this, this bank over here is I should definitely catch a fish here so we'll make a long cast right upon it and pull that spinnerbait through here hopefully that's some fish staged up facing the way facing this grass line or just in this area willing to feed
see him. Oh, all right, okay, okay. They're getting a little bit bigger. <laughs> Kind of straighten out my spinnerbait. That's not cool. I think I might be on to something here, guys. But size-wise, nothing yet. But that's the biggest of the day. Shot out from under that grass. That I did notice. I'm going to run it back through that again and see. I haven't had anybody out far. I think if I do get a bite out there, it's going to be a dish. Uh, a more quality sized fish. They feel so much bigger when you hit it when they hit it because it's just dink fest. Dinks, dinks on top of dinks. That little guy was a little bit further out, and I was kind of yo yo in that, so huh. maybe that's the ticket to get more bites. They haven't been too much bigger than that, though, size wise, fish. Again, geez, I don't even know how many fish I've caught right now. Okay, sorry about that little guy. Spinnerbait for the wind, guys. But they're getting bigger. I see you looking at me. A little bit bigger, so. I think I've learned something new with my presentation of the spinnerbait. Let's try something different. So it's kind of in my head imitating the, the, the action that I would normally do using a Bill Lewis rattle trap, which I don't have with me, which I wish I did. And then again, if I can catch them like this, all I'm doing is kind of yo yoing it. Let me fall. And they're eating it, guys. That's two fish off this little grass point here. I had a feeling I would be able to capitalize on some of these fish out here with this windblown banks and seeing that shad. It's kind of yo yo in that. Definitely the bigger fish of the day. I give him a pound. Uh, the clouds are starting to go away. So what you want to do? A lot of times you go out fishing, just kind of imitate shad or any kind of bait fish. Especially when you see the bait fish, physically see it. This is a little area right here for a couple more minutes and see if I can hook into another fish. Oh, that actually looked really just. Oh! He came off. 
They gotta be schooled up over here. That one came off. I should have let them eat a little bit longer. pounds maybe Who's the, the video it's actually been a couple days since I've actually recorded and edited and everything but it just goes to show guys you pay attention to what's going on in the water pay attention to every little detail uh, while you're on foot or on a boat so shad busting up or getting chased by bass and that's what keyed me into fishing the spinnerbait the war eagle half ounce uh, spinnerbait didn't have a lot of success catching Big fish, I did catch a decent size there close to the end. But guys, it was really consistent, really, uh, it was just really, really easy to figure them out. Once I seen that shad, kind of had an idea of what I needed to use. Had I had a, a lipless or a uh, Bill Lewis rattle trap and might have come into contact with a lot more fish. Man, maybe not have lost any, but guys we caught some decent fish we caught a bunch of dinks which i noticed some giants in there so it was a world war trip it was definitely fun um guys as always like comment subscribe share my videos and uh we'll see you on the next episode peace